Hello. Uh, thank you for introducing me, and thank you for giving me um, the CCI the chance to be here. Special thanks to Anton. And um, today, I would like to um, speak about the gaps we've been detecting uh, on the six years that my organization is busy working to promote industrial cybersecurity. First of all, I will explain why my organization, the CCI, is one of the best organizations to provide these indicators to the global market. Secondly, I will detail the gaps we have the debt and why these gaps are acting as barriers to increase the cybersecurity in industrial organizations. And finally, I will detail some initiatives that are trying to decrease these barriers. Okay, the Industrial Cybersecurity Center, the CCI, my organization, is uh, the largest organization promoting industrial cybersecurity worldwide. We count with more than 2,000 members. 2,000 members who are professional and who are organizations for, from more than 40 nationalities. All actors involved in cybersecurity have a place in my organization. From end users to cybersecurity providers, from public body research centers, device manufacturers, integrators, and engineering firms. Whoever is working in cybersecurity, it's uh, coming to the CCI. In our team, there are 40 regional coordinators. These coordinators work locally to span our ecosystem. They share knowledge, they share experience, so we can have a global view of the state of industrial cybersecurity worldwide. They are mainly in America, Europe, Asia, and Middle East. In addition, we come with 20 worldwide recognized experts who knows they have a special knowledge, very particular knowledge of different disciplines into the cybersecurity in the industrial environments. So that allows us to produce high quality events publications, and training. During these six years, we have published 21 studies regarding the state of the industrial cybersecurity in different regions. 11 countries, mainly in Europe and America. More than 650 industrial organizations have filled up our survey. The same survey for all that includes technical, organizational, and market, market forecasting aspects. So at the end, with the global view that our experts, our coordinators, share with the team, the experience and the knowledge, plus the more than 650 information provided by the industrial organization, we have a global view. With this global view, we have found a few gaps that are working as barriers and are the ones that I'm going to present. These barriers I will present are two focus on the human factor and another three mainly on management and process of cybersecurity. An awareness, lack of training and qualification. I'm sure you have heard this discard so many times, but maybe you are not aware of what are the consequences in the long term. 
regarding access. We work in an environment where sentence like, uh, we have to be more competitive, the production cannot stop, or if it's working, don't touch it. These sentences are the ones we very often heard. So what that means is that we work focus on objectives. We have to fix, we have to configure it, we have to implement wherever, as long as production keeps on going. So at the end of the time, a lot of infrastructures doesn't know what assets they have, doesn't know how they are configured, doesn't know how they are working. And if you don't know what you've got, how can you protect it? In addition, some of them are so adventure that instead of having an approach basic on a cybersecurity diagnosis, they just work on it. It's like having medicines when you don't know what is your illness. For example, from our participants, the one that uh, filled up the survey, the 650, more than 200 organizations admit that they are working on cybersecurity, but they have never carried out any risk assessment. That means the 33%. And I would like to share something with you. These organizations are at least worried about cybersecurity. They are concerned about cybersecurity because they participate in our activities and, the, and we are the Industrial Cybersecurity Center. So they come here because they are worried about cybersecurity. And among that, this is the percentage. Okay, let's take this number down and have an example. Spain is a country which is uh, quite advanced regarding cybersecurity. There, we have carried on a few studies, and the last one said that uh, we are sadly in the average, 33%. So, taking numbers from the official federation of industry, what that means is that more than 60,000 industrial organizations are working in Spain without taking care of any risk derived from this unattended risk. And in other words, more than 700,000 employees are exposed to physical damage derived from this unattended risk. This is just an example. Okay, let's have a look what happened when an organization declared that they have done an assessment. The most has done an assessment based on organizational aspect. Follows the one that has taken on technical aspects and others based on current standards. Vulnerabilities. This is not bad news. The most of them by our surveys declare that they are making, they are taking any measure to uh, control it. And uh, these are the graphics. Based on our studies in these surveys and the experience here, it's uh, something that everybody knows the most times. The IT departments are the ones that are taking care of these issues in the organizations. So have a look. Here is the, their influence. The most measures are inherited from IT systems. This, this is not wrong. This could be good. This uh, doesn't mean that it's a bad approach as long as who is working to implement them and to configure it knows what they are doing. I mean, they had to take the particularities of the industrial environment to configure it, these measures. 
these ones are less used, but, for example, identity management. Identity management is, I'm sure that is quite complicated to move directly to this environment. One of four in our surveys say that they are using it, but at the end of the day, probably is most times just one user configurate and the credentials are served by all workers around. And um, uh, that's normal. They are working in a place that production can never stop. If somebody forgot the password, they cannot produce him because of that. If it's uh, an accident, they cannot wait or delay the situation because somebody has forgotten the password in a situation of panic. And let's have a look to this one. Only the 10% is taking care of managing security in supply chain. This is a really nightmare. This is a headache for organizations, the, from the smallest to the largest, from the ones that are kidnapped by their technology provider to the ones that has so many providers that they can tell you who they are. This is a reality that has to change, because the most times, now, your technology providers will ask you where are, will be asking you to connect to your network. And sometimes it's not a question. Sometimes it's not a request. They will tell you that it's a requirement if you want to have service and of configuration. So think about it. Because if you don't take care of this, your organization will be as unsecure as the most unsecure of your providers. OK, no integration. Think about how we are doing cybersecurity right now. Some organization thinks that it's just a, pro a project that will work. Production, that is it. But no, cybersecurity must be a process completely integrate into the rest of the process of your organization. We didn't ask if cybersecurity processes are completely integrated into the other process, but we did ask how many have defined an incident procedure process. And um, so this, is, this was the average. The 30% the 30 sorry, didn't define an incident procedure. Maybe it's not that much. Let's have a look. In the United States, we limit our study to the electricity, water, oil, and gas sectors. These organizations are probably one of the most advanced regarding cybersecurity because of the criticality of their process and also because they are under very restrictive laws. And uh, we make then this question. Okay. Have you defined, implemented, and tested your cyber incident response process? What can be the percentage here? What do you think? One of two. That was. And these are one of the most advanced regarding cybersecurity. The other 33 say that uh, they are working on it. And still, 70% only works on reactive means. 17% of organizations that the most are critical. Okay, let's do the same with, um, as, as I've done with uh, Spain. Take the numbers from the United States uh, 
um, census bureau. Okay, I took the, the data from there. This is the number of infrastructures. 8,000, more than 8,000 have working only on reactive means. And employees, more than 200,000 are exposed, are working in critical infrastructures that only works when something's happened. Okay, let's do a very quickly view of what's happened when there's a lack of training and qualification. You cannot be um, with a really perception of the risk the organization is exposed to. You're not aware, you cannot get any support. You are not able to explain to the decision makers the importance of it. So you are not going to have the support in means of resource and neither the coordinations between the implicated teams. Okay, <laughs> this was uh, not the right one. <laughs> anyway, I will explain. Um, here we ask it about uh, if the team leader was aware of the risk that that are delivered the, derived from the cybersecurity um, risk, and the answer was that only 90 percent was fairly well aware that. A 37% was almost not aware, very bad aware. This is the reality. So, when you are not um, aware, you cannot define the requirements of the cybersecurity your infrastructure needs. You don't have critical capacity to to choose between technology, to choose between manufacturers, and uh, to know which ones are taking cybersecurity from the design into their device. So you don't know neither to choose the right supply to your infrastructure. Okay, so if you want your investment to work in cybersecurity, please work on awareness, training, and qualification. And uh, if it's possible, do it in a way that you motivate your professionals. Maybe you think that cybersecurity is not uh, fun enough, but here is a proof that the people were in a seven hours training and still were having fun. Okay, cybersecurity in new projects. What's happened? We have asked in our service about who is taking requirements of cybersecurity in new projects. New projects have a really high, high dependency of technology, so it should include complete requirements. But uh, maybe we don't put ourselves in the shoes of the engineering team. We are not providing the right information, and we are not solving the doubts they have when they are thinking and include requirements, cybersecurity requirements. So we should answer these questions. What will be the impact over the performance of my design? What will be the impact on the deployment? How long is going to take in, in, uh, in taking requirements of cybersecurity, and what about the budget? We have to be sure that they understand that the budget of taking cybersecurity requirements from the design is going to be much lower than taking in, in production. And probably they don't know about the systems of industrial technology that is got cybersecurity from the design neither the providers, law or standards that apply. They want to know also if these requirements can be validated. 
and the professional that have to be in their teams, into their organization or outside. So the reality is that in the design phase, only 50% are taking basic requirements, basic level. And you cannot see it, but it was 20% that never takes cybersecurity requirements. And that's very bad news. About the industrial cybersecurity responsible, what I've called wanted cost, you may not be aware of what means not having a point already responsible. Because the most times, this responsibility is distributed between departments, between professionals or teams. But it's not a leader. When it's not a leader, it's, it's a lack of leadership on this matter in the organization. So you are not going to get the support. You're not going, going to get the resource, neither the collaborations of the teams. And it will be a lack of the strategic alignment between the teams. What else? No commitment, no consequence of a bad configuration or unattended cybersecurity issues. And um, to confirm these asseverations, I will show you um, numbers that we took from our survey. Okay, if we take from the 650 organizations, only the ones that say that they haven't appointed a cybersecurity, industrial cybersecurity security responsible, let's see, the most as our business that have less than 250 employees, national coverage and less than two million dollars in comms. So the most business in our most whole countries. 60% have, have not carried out a risk assessment. Do you remember? The average was 30. Only basic cybersecurity remember uh, requirements in new projects. 70%. The average was 50%, and the other 20 got complete requirements. Here, without the responsible, no one took complete requirements. The 80% have not defined an incident process when the average was 30. And, um, Basically, on our survey, we know that the most organizations, um, whoever is buying cybersecurity, it belongs to IT or OT teams. But here, it's responsible for the leadership team, the one that is not aware enough. Okay, let's talk about incident information. After all the events that has happened in the world, we know that we, are, we all are in the same boat. Some states have, have implemented incident notification systems. This helps. This helps to de decrease the spread of an attack. That teams cannot be prepared in advance because teams need needs to do exercises. Exercises from the point of view of an attacker and defense. And also, they have to prove that the theory of an incident process uh, respond. It works. It works in reality. So, they need the information regarding the incident scenario, incident full characterization, incident treatment, and that's the information, the information that really will empower the teams. 
regulations, norms, and standards. We had asked in our, in, in our surveys also about this, because there are at least enough ones in, that should be used when you become any approach to cybersecurity. They will help you to organize the information, to um, incorporate into the process of your organization. So if they are there, don't start the house from the roof. Use them. 30% do not use any norm of standard or a standard when they are becoming their approach to cybersecurity. The ones that um, are using, the most are using ISO 27001, personal data protection law, and then critical infrastructures protection laws. But they are not enough. They are general. You have to fix them into your own process, to your own particularities of your business, your organization. And also, you have to include proactive measures of this information of your attacker, reactive measures based on the analysis of uh, malicious activity, and also anticipative measures based on learning algorithms, model training, or other technologies. OK, that was, that was the gap. And now let me introduce, introduce you some initiatives. In CCI, we are working on awareness, lack of training and qualification. We do events, knowledge teams, and we have the first professional industrial cybersecurity school. Regarding the industrial cybersecurity responsible, we will publish a guide for the organizations to know which should be the expertise and the profiles of any professional that will take this responsibility. Apart from that, we have a credential program uh, to increase the number of professionals working on it. And among of that, we train this responsible with our school. Regarding cybersecurity in new projects, we are working on a technical platform of industrial cybersecurity requirements. So we want to make it easy to the engineering teams to know what requirements they have to apply to their new projects. This platform will have very important information for them, such as what kind of requirements are taking other organizations like mine, same sector, or maybe same technologies, who are the providers that can cover these kind of requirements? A full catalog of requirements, or even place where you can fix your own. And so at the end of the time, we want these professionals to make it easy. Regarding incident information system, we are working also in a platform where the teams can share the information they consider it that is key for them to make cybersecurity exercise. Of course, it's in an anonymous way, but it's, um, we, we are trying to make it easy to the community to share this information. And regarding regulation norms and standards, we have an industrial cybersecurity management system. It's based on the most used standards, and it helps the professionals to become cybersecurity process in their organizations. In the school, we train how to use it. And um, apart from that, we have a guide of the European law to make it 
easy for the professional who works in industrial organization to know what kind of law it's uh, under their organization. And also I would like to mention that our host, Kaspersky, is also working to solve these barriers, to decrease these barriers. They are working on awareness, on training, on assessment. They are also working hard on these gaps. And just a couple of tips. Please build team that never falls. Here, I show you one way. There are a lot. But if you do it funny, you will have people more motivated. OK, if anybody is curious, you can look for a Roomba Chiba Pass, OK? And uh, the last tip, cybersecurity grows as it grows the team trust. And that's all. Thank you for your attention.